So let me tell you about a guy who buys a course online for Java. I'm gonna learn Java. I'm gonna learn Java. Now he's feeling yeah. pretty good, right? Because this course was designed for beginners. Beginners meaning he didn't know his JDK from his text editor. If I'm writing code, why do I need a text editor? Now if you're thinking, dude, that was common sense. You've proven that you suffer from the curse of knowledge. Many instructors suffer from it, so we have set ourselves the task of curing ourselves from its frustration. Here we go. Ah, now before we get started, I do need to make a comment about a comment from yesterday's video where Chris Mala says, how stupid is that? A thread for learning noobs to develop in an enclosed forum only for recognized developers. Well, Chris, you're absolutely right. Uh, I was talking about all these links and then you had no way to get the links and I apologize for that. That wasn't the plan though. The plan was to post them in the forum. The problem is I can't post in the forums with a whole bunch of links. The forum permissions wouldn't let me to do that. So I, I tried to have it fixed, but over the weekend it just wasn't really possible with my other colleagues at XDA. So I have all those links posted in the show notes below so everyone can get to them. Now the curse of knowledge states that the more knowledgeable we get in our area of expertise, the more unnatural it becomes for us to communicate those ideas in a simple, clear way. Now, it was very clear from numerous interviews that we've done with developers that they've lamented about the lack of methodical approach to teaching new aspiring developers. Instructors may think that they're taking a step-by-step -step approach, but from the novice's point of view, they've skipped a few steps. This is the curse of knowledge in action. Therefore, it's been my goal from this past week to find as many resources as I could that did teach in a methodical step-by-step -step approach, really sensitive to the novice's needs to fill in those knowledge gaps. Now, we can't go into every link that I provided in the show notes, but I wanted to talk about three. The first up is a game called RoboCode. It's a game for learning Java. You create these tanks that try and destroy each other. And it's not just a way to learn Java in a fun way to see if you actually enjoy it, but it helps you learn concepts in a way that's much easier to remember. Number two is Udemy. Now there's many competitors to Udemy. There's Udacity, Code Academy, a whole bunch of different things. But why I like Udemy is I've interviewed a number of the instructors and I really like their approach. And number two, there seems to be a nice balance between a lot of in-depth content, there's many hours in each course for the most part, and easy access to the instructors. Of all four or five different instructors that I interviewed, each of them said that they respond to problems via email in 24 to 48 hours. That's good. Now, YouTube tutorials. There is a plethora of YouTube tutorials out there for Android and various different programming languages. There's a few I want to talk about. The New Boston. Many of you will already know The New Boston. He's extremely popular. He has over 200 videos just on Android development alone. The link to that is below. The New Guy Boston, I forget his name, but he taught himself how to code completely. He went to college for something completely different and he speaks in a way that's very accessible for the novice. He does good stuff. There's another one, uh, a link in below in the show notes that is some sort of course at an Indian university where they teach programming and the instructor is is it's some sort of screencast of some sort and the students maybe about 50 or 60 of them are listening and they can interrupt the instructor and ask questions it's a great way to avoid the curse of knowledge you can check that out please remember what Chris Hasselman said you can see our full interview with him in my channel how to become TV it's titled how not to suck as an Android developer here's a clip here we talks about getting through the dip you know, all the textbooks in the world will not make you, will not magically turn you into someone who can write a lot of high quality code. The only way to write a lot of high quality code is to write a lot of low quality code first. Uh, and eventually, right, you will, you will get to a place where you appreciate the stuff that you can write yourself and you actually think that it's good. Um, Ira Glass has, a, has an amazing bit where he talks about how there is this gap where you know what you like, you know what you appreciate, you have taste, but you have no capacity to live up to that taste, right? Everything that you make looks like garbage to you, it looks terrible, right? Because you've refined your taste and you're now only beginning to get into the development of it. So, uh, you know, if I could go back and tell myself, you know, look, you're going to go through a rough path right after you start doing something you're gonna to totally suck at it and that everyone goes through there's not a single developer that I know who has been effective and amazing right out of the gate 
it's a struggle and you have to struggle and you have to want it but it pays off you get through it you get over it you start to make things that you can really be proud of things that you can show other people and so you know everybody says stick to it and I and I'm just gonna keep echoing that you you know you will get better but you can't be afraid of failure you have to keep trying